Hi and welcome to steelonthenet.com on YouTube. Today's topic is how to do a steel market study. Well, a first question should really be why should I want to do a steel market study and maybe let's spend a moment to on that um, at the outset. Well, typically I might be thinking about investment in a new plant. For example, something like a new greenfield rebar mill. Um, before I create a financial plan, uh, a profit loss account or something similar that my bankers or financiers might take a look at to assess the investment, I do need to know roughly how much rebar that facility is likely to sell. And to do that, I need the market study to tell me the size of the rebar market, the number of competitors and the likely sales volume that the new rebar mill will produce. Um, a pretty good starting point. Uh, before we get into rebar itself is generally to take a look at the demand for total steel in the particular um, sales territory uh, that's of interest. Uh, let's say for example that our interest is in rebar in country uh, ABC. Um, on this basis uh, I would suggest that a good place to start is taking a look at total steel demand and that's for all finished product uh, in country ABC. Um, you can normally determine total demand uh, from data published by World Steel. Uh, in the country, in a case of country ABC, that m demand might be a number such as, for example, a million tonnes. And if you recognise that demand um, invariably covers flat, long and tube products, with rebar being a long product, um, and that uh, worldwide uh, demand for flat, long and tubular products is in the ratio of about 45%, 45% and 10%, um, your starting point would be that long products in country ABC uh, are roughly going to be 45% of the million tonnes. These are world averages and locally they may differ, but this is, I stress, just the starting point. But if you also then consider that uh, long products, 45% uh, of the million tonnes or 450,000 tonnes, in this case also will include consumption of heavy sections, medium sections and rod and similar products, uh, you probably estimate that rebar itself might come to a bit less than 45%, let's assume maybe 20-25%, something like that. So our envelope for rebar demand in country ABC, uh, as an initial estimate, is going to be somewhere around nothing to 250,000 tonnes for the purpose of this example. Let's now turn to rebar steel demand itself. Um, a pretty common way of establishing uh, demand is to estimate apparent consumption. Uh, apparent consumption is always, of course, very close to true demand, um, uh, but it ignores changes in inventory. Um, for most purposes, uh, and certainly as a consultant working in this sector for the last 15-20 years, I've never had a problem with the approximation. That is an approximation that is okay, uh, and apparent consumption is uh, normally calculated as the mathematical sum of production plus imports, less exports. So uh, to get to our assessment of rebar demand in country ABC, the next step is to figure out three particular values. These are production, imports and exports of rebar uh, for a recent period, such as the immediate preceding calendar year. Now, production figures for rebar by country are, are, are actually published by the World Steel Association in their Steel Statistical Yearbook. That is a, a report that's published annually. And in this example, let's uh, put some figures together, some notional figures for country ABC. Let's assume the production shown by World Steel is about 110,000 tonnes. Uh, in some cases, you may instantly find that a figure isn't published, and where that happens, uh, an alternative way of getting an estimate is to try and get uh, some assessment of capacity uh, uh, in the country. Um, you would really have to go on the internet or, and do a search of um, rebar capacity in country ABC. Alternatively, if you have access to Metal Bulletin's Iron Steelworks of the World, they very often list capacity by plant and country. Uh, give you the numbers, you could add those up, assume that output is somewhere between 50 and 75% 50 and, 75 and uh, on that basis you would be able to have a pretty good stab at the approximate level of production for rebar in country ABC. That's uh, as an alternative, this is, if you like, method number two if you can't get the hard data from the World Steel Association. So that's the first number which is production. The next two numbers you need to estimate apparent consumption are import and export tonnages and those figures are generally available from the national customs statistics of the country in question. Every steel product has its own code under which it trades internationally 
uh, in the case of rebar, this particular category of steel or quality of steel is covered by um, harmonised system HS, harmonised system number 721420. Uh, and a number of organisations, such as, for example, the Iron and Steel Statistics Bureau or ISSB in the UK, can also supply steel trade data, and that's both import and export volumes as well as traded prices for uh, as, uh, what is normally a small charge. In this example, let us say that our trade data shows imports of 130,000 tonnes and exports of 5,000 tonnes. If we combine that information with the first number we discussed, production of 110,000 tonnes, you get a, a, a calculation for rebar demand at production 110 plus imports 130 less exports of 5 gives you apparent consumption 235,000 tonnes. That number, of course, uh, we discussed the envelope a little bit earlier on the basis of looking at total consumption. That number of 235 is within our envelope of nothing to 250,000 tonnes. So uh, on the basis of the two estimates are pretty close. I feel comfortable that uh, in this case the estimate is, is not, a bad, not a bad stab at uh, the true level of demand. OK, so what next? Um, we have our demand estimate for country ABC of 235,000 tonnes now. Um, it's probably instructive as a next step to take a look at rebar supply. Now we discussed, the first number we discussed was production of 110,000 tonnes. We can assume that's uh, the existing and, and only competitor. Uh, our own facility we can assume has a capacity uh, of uh, 100,000 tonnes. Uh, Normally you apply a capacity utilisation to a capacity number, uh, something like a loading figure of 80%. So in this example, our own particular plant that we're thinking about, with a capacity of 100,000 tonnes, working at 80% utilisation, would be making roughly 80,000 tonnes of rebar a year. So with supply from the existing competitor of 110,000 and 80,000 tonnes of rebar from the new plant, we have an expected supply of something like 190,000 tonnes. Now we've talked about demand of 235, so that means that with these numbers a further 45,000 tonnes of steel of rebar would be required from imports to balance overall supply and demand. So in this scenario um, we further assume uh, or can calculate uh, a market share of 34% for our facility, that's our 80,000 tonnes we're making on 235,000 tonnes of total demand, which comes to 34%. We can also work out that our competitor in this scenario has a, a, a market share of 47%, which is 110,000 tonnes on 235,000 tonnes of demand. And that relative um, level of market shares, us at 34%, the main competitor at 47 uh, to me seems right. If I'm only just starting up, I can't assume to have a dominant market share, something in excess of the leading supplier. Um, I would not expect to get a dominant supply share in year one uh, immediately after startup unless I was giving away the rebar at very low cost and of course my financiers would not be very keen on that scenario. So in summary this short video has illustrated how one might determine the market positioning for a proposed new plant. We started by getting a broad estimate of the likely market size based on total consumption uh, we then assessed production and import, import and export volumes uh, to more accurately gauge the exact level of rebar demand. And we finally estimated market shares for ourselves and key competitors to make sure that these seemed okay and sensible and uh, uh, in a relative order where we weren't claiming an excessive market share. In real life, you might, of course, do one or two further things. You might double check demand for other products, such as sections and wire rod, to see how they fit into the overall long product demand picture, or the 45% that we estimated in this case. And if you like, you might therefore refine the macro estimate to make sure it's logical. You might also, and um, would be well advised, to think about demand in subsequent years. So we've talked about demand in year one. You know, how about demand in years two and three and so on? Is construction particularly a high growth sector or low growth sector or maybe declining? How is total rebar demand therefore likely to evolve after year one? Uh, and as part of that question, how am I going to ramp up production? Um, it would be very unlikely that I would be producing a full 80,000 tonnes or working at 80% capacity in year one. Uh, I might start at 50% in year one, then get to uh, 
70% in year two and only 80% in year three. There would be a gradual ramp up um, after plant commissioning and that generally requires a little bit of thinking as well. Um, we might also want to consider the segmentation of rebar demand by quality, for example, um, TMT, um, thermomechanically treated um, rebar versus standard rebar if we're working in Africa, for example, or by diameter, um, because uh, clearly we could be focused on uh, diameters of the 12 or 14 millimeter range, but we might also be wanting to make much higher uh, diameters um, with, of course, implications for throughput and capacity in the mill. So those aspects are generally worth considering as well. Uh, and finally, uh, perhaps one of the most important issues is speaking to customers in market ABC, just to make sure that our assumptions are roughly right, that they agree with our perspectives on total demand, that we haven't missed out any competitors, really as a double check on our logic. That concludes this uh, short presentation. I hope that was uh, uh, helpful and interesting. If you're looking for assistance with a steel market study, why not contact us at www.steelonthenet.com. You can email us at info at steelonthenet.com uh, and you can call us on plus four four seven seven five one four nine zero double eight five. My name is Andre Kotas. I am the CEO of www.steelonthenet.com. Thank you very much for listening.